Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and in this video, we are going to be taking a look at a truck that a lot of you guys I know have been waiting for. Some of you have seen it on the streams, and this is Red's 1995 Ford F-150 Pre-Runner. Now, this truck has a staggering amount of detail put into it from the suspension to the tuning to the engine to the interior. Lots of amazing stuff going on here. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. And also for the map we're going to be using today, I decided to use Stadium Super Trucks because I felt like it had a lot of different areas that really highlighted this truck's capability. So let's go ahead and dive right into the build first. Now, there really aren't that many uh, customization options for it because really it comes a certain way. And the way that this thing comes like straight from not necessarily the factory, but the way it comes out of Red's shop is the way pretty much that you would want it. Now, it's a Ford 400 cubic inch, 465 horsepower engine, a E40D transmission, a pre-runner suspension, custom designed pre-runner suspension, 35 inch BFG KR Baja tires, autonomous scout extended winch, and frame add-ons, you have a couple of different things. So you have the spare in the back, which can be either removed or left in there. We're going to leave it in there. You also have the hood, which can be removed as well. And the hood, you can see the really, truly extreme amount of detail in the engine bay all the way from the actual tube frame up to where the reservoirs for the shocks mount you can see the full details of the coilovers you can see the engine all the way from the intake to the valve covers to the headers to literally like you can even see the wires there and you can see the radiator there's just about every single last bit of detail on this thing is available for you to see now for those of you that are interested in getting your hands on this truck this is one of red's premium access mods so i'll leave a link in the description down below to where you guys can get more info about that on his discord now with all that being said let's go ahead and carry on so we're gonna go straight into rooftop you can do beacons and fog lights or roof fog lights we're not gonna do either one of those because neither one of them really line up in my opinion with the uh purpose of this truck you have two different wheel options you have sort of this old school steel wheel style and you also have this kind of new school uh beadlock style which is that which is what we're gonna go with now in the paint department we have quite a good variety of color options, and one of the cool things is that the cage and the springs on the coilovers actually change color when you change the color of the truck. And I personally think this truck looks amazing in red. I think it looks absolutely wonderful in red, and so that's what we're going to run it in. But I think it, I don't know, there's something about this truck in red that really accents all the features. Now, you also have beans on the dash, which is a very welcome sight, considering the fact that a lot of the vehicles we've seen lately have not allowed you to put beans on the dash so i am personally very happy about that one and accessories wise we're gonna probably go to uh, we're probably gonna go ahead and do uh we'll do dice this time dice will work i definitely think dice looks good and it definitely fits so we're gonna go ahead and leave the garage here on super truck stadium so we're actually gonna go into free cam real quick because normally i wouldn't do a free cam walk around of these trucks and i would just kind of show you guys in the garage but Look at all of the detail here. Look at all of the detail on offer. I mean, look at the suspension. Look at all of that detail worked into it. And look at the, you can see the steering shaft. You can see the alternator. You can see the headers. You can see the freaking radiator fan. Everything in here is fully detailed. My apologies, by the way, for the jumpy camera. That's just kind of how free cam works. Now, let's also have a look at the detail on the interior. Now, this is where things get absolutely wild. You have your speedometer and your your uh, your tack right there on the left, obviously. You also have the key. You have the shifter. But the crazy part about it is that literally you have a switch panel with built-in cup holders. You have racing seats with actual seat belts just like hanging on the seat. They're racing harnesses. And you have all these different gauges up here on the middle of the dash. Everything from fuel, oil pressure, oil temperature, water temperature, transmission temperature, um, fuel, everything. And then you also have a gigantic switch panel here as well complete with a glove box and a stereo which i don't really feel like you'd ever be using but if you wanted to use it it was there and my dude has fallen asleep so i think that's my cue to go ahead and fire this thing up sounds great too sounds awesome so let's go ahead and take it straight to the racetrack and from what i've heard it handles better with the all-wheel drive on so that's how we're going to drive it at least that's how we're going to drive it first off now, something else that I wanted to show you guys and that Red was very keen on uh, letting me know is apparently this interior at night gets pretty interesting. So, let's see. Whoop. Night. 
it middle of the night. Thank you. Proper backlit dash. That's really, really cool. Proper backlit dash. And actually, some of the buttons even light up like green and orange. That's that's really, really cool. That's really freaking cool. All right, let's go ahead and head to the track now and see what we can do. Now, we're not going to actually activate one of the time graces. We're just going to go ahead and hit the track and see what it does. And let's get into it. Now, I know it's only a three-speed in automatic mode, but it gets up to that third gear very quickly. Landings are no problem. The tires stuff right up into the fenders and take full advantage of this long travel suspension. They absolutely do. It handles really well. Like, incredibly well. Look at that. Wow. Go, 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 go. Most trucks just either understeer straight off or they, or they turn in too quickly with the all-wheel drive on. This truck, no such issues at all. And look at that. I was able to dive right down towards the apex without any worries at all about the truck flipping over. That's, that's really respectable, actually. And it's quick, too. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but it's designed to feel realistic. It's designed to have that realistic pre-runner feel. And let me tell you, it absolutely does. And the long travel suspension is a big part of that. Look at that. No damage. Not a single bit of damage. There we go. It handles so well, and it's so easy to get it to go in the direction you want it to go. And you can do it, like, with some style to it, even. Wow. I, I am blown away by the suspension performance of this truck. I mean, the engine is good, the power is good, the transmission is good, but the absolute star here is the suspension and the suspension tuning. The suspension tuning is literally on a different level. It's on a level that we really have not seen before. And what we're actually going to do... Whoa, there we go. Dude, like, most trucks would be over there towards the rock wall. But this one, not even, like, not even a chance. Whoa! It does get a little wild when you put it in high, I've got to say. If you're going to put it in high, you've got to drive it with a little bit of... little bit of restraint and a little bit of, like, planning. Because it can get a little finicky in high. Especially going off of jumps. Because you got to be careful how hard you launch yourself. Because if you launch yourself a little too hard, that is when you will start damaging the truck. And that's not the truck's fault. That's just more on the driver. Easy. It's up to you to judge your jump speed. Oh my god. Make your way around. Come on. Come on, dude. Come on. There we go. Woo. Come on. Make it. Not bad. Again, absorb the landing super well. Will you make that? Come on. Oh my god. What? Really? I wanted to put it into high, and it kept acting like it wasn't in high. I ended up, like, going right into the wall because of it. Let's see how it does on the oval. It should still do really well. I think it'll do really well. But let's find out. Stay down to the inside. It's really easy to recover, actually. I mean... I know it was getting a little bit, like, out of shape, but that's just kind of because I'm trying to find the limits of it, because the limits of it on pavement are very different than the limits of it on dirt. The limit of, limits of it on dirt are very, very easy to find and manage. The limits of it on pavement take a little bit more time, but they're not bad at all. They're not bad at all once you find them, that's for sure. Now, let's see how this thing does. For, first of all, I'm going to take it back into the garage now and I'm going to change the color because I do think it looks really good in this sort of grayish white that it comes with but I do also want to see how it does in a couple of other environments now normally that would not be the goal for this truck but since we have a mud pit right here let's just see what happens way better than you oh my god way better than you would ever think it would do mud pit number two ah mud pit number two kind of stops it but through mud pit number one it's great that's so weird, dude. I've never seen such a huge difference from truck to truck between, like, mud pit number one and mud pit number two. That's a huge difference. That is an absolutely huge difference. Let's actually go back to the racetrack and put down a time because the first run was kind of like a trial run. Now I want to actually put down a real time and see how it feels. Let's see what time of day it is right now. Morning? Ah, we'll set it straight to afternoon. That way it'll be... Oh, don't get into the one on the right. Get into the one on the left. Because the one on the left is the combo one. Yep. All right. Three, two, one, and go. Come on. Fire up. Oh, my God. There's a checkpoint. Come on. And go. 
Oh, oh my god. Turn. There we go. There we go. Little bit of understeer, but not bad. This time I'm actually trying to do a decent lap. So we'll see how that goes for me. Oh, it actually kind of got upset there. I don't know why it got upset at me. That was very weird. Very, very weird. The checkpoint numbers are weird. There's like two checkpoint number ones. That's a bit odd, but you know what? We're just going to race it and see what happens. It's staying in third, which is good. Picking up speed. Up and over the top. Little bit of suspension damage. We came down a little bit hard on the back, but that's okay. That's okay. It has the suspension to deal with that. There you go. Modulate. Modulate. Come on. Oh, no. Dang it, dude. That kind of invalidates our time, but you know what? I mean, I'm still going to keep going for it because I think it can still set a good time. It's really banged up at the moment, but that's okay. I mean, I think we can still do something with it. Oh, my God. Go around the chicane. There you go. 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 The one spot is hard back there because if you have to, like, you have to judge your entry to the asphalt sweeper very carefully otherwise it will spit you out to the right and you'll end up getting into this really awkward situation where you're on the outside of the jump but you can't go any further to the inside and so it ends up spitting you out on the side and rolling you over i'm gonna laugh if my actual like run the first time was better well technically it was because we didn't roll over on the first time so i guess technically that does make my run on the first one uh, a little bit better What's ironic about that is we didn't time that one, which is sad. Modulating the truck in high actually does work quite well. I just have to get a little bit better at it. Easy does it. There you, there you go. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. Back into third gear. Go, 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 go. It's still a good time. That's the funny thing, is it's still a good time. I mean, and without the rollover, obviously it would have been much faster. But, go into high. Thank you. It wanted to go into high, but at the same time, it didn't want to go into high. Make it all the way over. Decent landing. Little bit of damage, but it's okay. There you go. Find your way around the inside. Find your way around the inside. Thank you. Alright. Checkpoint 9, checkpoint 10. Finish line. Let's get it. As long as you do it properly, it's... Yep, as long as you do it properly, it does a little slide and then stays to the inside of the corner and you are all good. Turn in. Whoa! Oh my god, that was... That was too close. That was... Oh, come on! It jumped to the right. That's not what I wanted. Oh, man. Come on, fire back up. Okay, there we go. So that was like, what, 320? It could have been a lot better. And the truck's really banged up right now. But that's, I mean, again, that's okay. It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. But I'll tell you, at the end of the day, like, this is a incredible truck. It's an incredible truck. And for any and every race map, it is going to be a blast. Whether that be this or the racetrack on the TNB Trails map or Frog's Racetrack all of those maps, this thing will absolutely excel on, and I think you guys should definitely try it out if you get the chance. Now, that's going to do it for this video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys next time.